Hi guys, how you doing? Look where I am today. A lot of activity going on out here. Really beautiful, right? Right on the river. And I have a really good message for you today. I wanna to try to see if I can even take a shot of the road because as peaceful as it is out here, it's, let me flip this around and show you, the road up there is just pretty busy also. And that, that's part of the analogy that I have today. It's really how we find God in the middle of our busy, busy, busy time. And the Bible tells us in Psalm 16, verse 11, that God will show us the path of life and that the fullness of joy is in the presence of the Lord and at his right hand are pleasures. So the analogy that I want to talk to you about today is finding God in the middle of the busyness. And I feel like in my own life, I'm settled in a new city and things are starting to really pick up and get busier and busier. And I'm reminded of how important it is for me to stop and find time to spend with the Lord. And you got to get creative with that, especially as busy as everybody is right now. But I was having a conversation with a friend the other day and I was saying to her, I said, the most powerful time that I have comes after I've spent this quiet time with the Lord. And really the truth is the quiet time, it's really a discipline to get quiet and still because the moment I decide I'm going to get quiet and still is when things start to just come through my head. Oh, I should be doing this. I need to do that. So I want to quickly tell you a little analogy story that I had with going to a beautiful place, some place that I love in the Ozark Mountains in Missouri. And I went to Prayer Mountain and they have three beautiful cabins. And I got to spend this time alone with the Lord for three days. And so I purposely, purposefully didn't take anything except for my Bible, a couple of books, but I just thought I'm going to be at this cabin and there's no cell phone service. There's no television. So I'm surely going to spend this time alone with the Lord. I'm going to be having, I guess, this prayer bonanza and I'm going to be praying for everybody that I know. And maybe I'm going to be scribing and writing. I just anticipated having all this time to do these things in the quiet. But what really happened was I got there and on the first day, I got a blanket, I went out on the porch, and some of you may have seen that prayer swing, but I sat on that swing with a blanket and some tea, and I just sang. I sang and worshiped all day long. Got up, went in the bathroom, came back, got some more tea, sat back on that porch until nighttime. And the same thing the second day, and the same thing the third day. And on the third day, it was time for me to leave the cabin. So we went to a midweek service. And that afternoon as I was packing my stuff up, I thought, oh no, Lord, did I waste the time that you gave me? Lord, I sat on that swing for pretty much three days singing. Did I waste the time? Should I have been doing something else? Should I have been writing, praying? you know, seeking your face. What should I have been, quote unquote, doing? And I was troubled. I started to fret about that, that God had given me, carved out this very special time, and I had wasted it by sitting there just on the porch, on the swing. And the moment I walk into the midweek service, Billy Brim, who this is her property, points to me and she says, the Lord says that not one moment spent in his presence is a waste, but it reaps rewards into eternity. Whoa, I was so blown away because nobody knew this except for myself and the Lord. So really, what does that mean? What was she saying? 
she was saying, the Lord is saying that any time that we spend in his presence, not one of those moments is a waste. There's always something that's happening. There's always a benefit for it. And, and there's a purpose to spending time alone with the Lord. So as I really started to pray and ask the Lord, Lord, while I was sitting on that swing, like, what were you doing? Like, what was happening in the spirit realm? That was really my question. What was going on in the spirit realm as I was sitting on that swing, just worshiping you? And this is the analogy that the Lord dropped in my spirit. It was, suppose my father and I, and just say, God, my heavenly father, we work for the same company, and he is the CEO, and I work for him. And he says to me, you know what? I just want to hang out with you for a while. We could talk about business later, but let's just hang out. That was the analogy that he gave me. And so what does that mean? If he's saying, let's just hang out for a while, we could talk about business later. Business would be praying, Lord, I need this, or this person needs that, or thank you for that, or blah, 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 whatever it is. But it's like this. Suppose the person that you really love to be with, your person, whether it's your love, your spouse, your child, your best friend, whoever it is, and you get to just spend time together. There's a lot of times where words aren't necessary. Words actually would ruin it. And so you just sit there enjoying each other's presence. And there's a time to talk, there's time for words, but really you're just enjoying each other's company. That's what the Lord wants from us. And if you don't have a best friend like that, then the Holy Spirit will be your best friend like that until he brings a friend or a love into your life like that. But that's what God yearns for from us. And I'll tell you the scripture again, Psalm 16 verse 11, and it says in the middle of the verse, the fullness of joy is in the presence of the Lord. The beginning of the verse tells us that he'll show us the path that we should take for our lives. And aren't most of us looking for that right now? There's so many shifts going on, so many people moving, so much activity. So if we're looking for direction, he says, I'll show you which path to take. And then the fullness of joy is in my presence. So that's the word today. Carve out some time and get along, get alone with the Lord and just work at it. Some people are afraid to be alone. Some people are really afraid to be quiet. And to me, that's really a demonic thing because the enemy knows how much power there really is in us being in the presence of the Lord. So let me just pray for us. Father, we just thank you for this magnificent day, Lord. Lord, we thank you for your hand upon us, Lord. And Lord, I just pray that you would give us each the discipline to be able to sit still and to be quiet in your presence, Lord. Father, I pray that as we're quiet in your presence, that we would have peace just sitting at your feet, waiting for our next set of instructions whether it's a, a minute, five minutes, 30 minutes, Lord. Help us to be mindful of the need and the benefit and the fruit that comes from being in your presence. And Lord, we give you the praise, the honor, and the glory for it. In Jesus' name, amen. So one last look around at this beautiful, beautiful area picking up here. I haven't even changed my clothes after church yet, but I'm going to change. And look at that. So find your time alone with the Lord. Love you guys. God bless you. Bye.